Uh, chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to speak here. Thank you for a quite kind invitation. Some doctors or many doctors in Europe are willing to introduce ESD into their practices. Why? Because they understand that surgery is sometimes too invasive. These data have been published uh, close to St. Petersburg in Estonia in one big center in the city of Tartu showing that uh, in hospital mortality of major GI tract surgery of upper GI tract is close to 6% and lower GI tract almost 2% and also morbidity after surgery is high. People coming for uh, treatment with early GI uh, neoplasias are very old and very ill. As you can see here, those are data from 18 consecutive patients coming to our institution, sorry for that, coming for, to our institution uh, for gastric ESD. And you can see that mean age of this population is almost 77 and comorbidity index is 3.5, which means that less invasive treatment like endoscopy provides is very beneficial to this population. As you know, early neoplastic lesions in GI tract can be treated either by ESD or EMR. Endoscopic mucosal resection is considered to be easier, but as you can see here, in all local organ locations, ESD is superior to EMR uh, with respect to unblock R0 and curative resection. So how to learn ESD in Europe? First of all, we have to choose somebody who will study ESD. In Europe, usually the best endoscopist in the department starts with the ESD. Uh, this doctor usually performs a lot of ERCPs, US. It is completely different in Japan or Korea, where the doctors are much more focused. And Fuishiro showed that in Japan, uh, the doctor who is uh, willing to train ESD should have a knowledge as a primary physician, should have an average level of endoscopic skills. He or she wants to acquire the sufficient knowledge and competent skills for ESD, and they, they know that not every endoscopist can become a perceptive of ESD. So we have doctor, and now how to train him? Probably the most efficient way is to send him to Japan or, or Korea, but uh, working with expert is uh, not uh, widely available. It is also rather costly. Therefore, several algorithms were proposed for Western physicians, and one of them is here. And what I would like to show you is that animal work is part of this uh, scheme. And animal work can be done easily with ex vivo model. It is the easy model that can be prepared uh, from pig stomach, as you can see here, or it can be a live porcine model, which is much more difficult. This is the situation in Athens last year where we can, together with Professor Piswo, organize very nice workshop on ESD training. But this is also not available for everybody and it is also rather costly. Nevertheless, we know that training in animal models could help endoscopists to overcome the learning curve before starting ESD in humans. Uh, as this slide is showing that the time for first and second half of gastric cases uh, on animal models is much lower for the second half of procedures. And this is important because, as you can see here, on the, in the study of Kato, almost all the perforation and piecemeal resections happen when the procedure is long. So if you are able during the training to make the procedure shorter, then probably you can be better with your patients. The aim of training should be competency. And who is competent for ESD? 
In Japan, for gastric ESD, the doctor should be able to treat so-called guideline lesion, which is, let's say, elevated lesion less than two centimeters in less than two hours. And for colorectal ESD, probably uh, the time of 15 minutes per each square centimeter should be the gold uh, for the training. Before you start with, with ESD, it is not important only to train, train yourself, but uh, to train also your environment. These are also some institutional requirements. You should definitely have a written policy for, for perforation management. You should discuss your cases in tumor boards. Maybe regular gastropathological meetings uh, are necessary. And uh, there is still no consensus about minimal case load in Europe, but I believe that it is imperative to perform at least 25 cases per year uh, per doctor. Not all instruments are available in uh, Europe. I would like to work with such a, a gastroscope with additional bending uh, for gastric ESD or with this prototype of coloscope which is uh, possible to bend more than the others. But uh, not everything is uh, available widely in Europe. In all possible guidelines, you will find that uh, so-called guideline lesion in the stomach is the best case to start with. It is better when it is on the opposite side, but anyway, it's antro-lesion, and you can see a nice unblocked resection. And those pictures are shown here to, uh, to, to show you that uh, uh, you have to really cooperate with your pathologist and the pathologist must, must be included into the training process. Otherwise, you would send him such a nice uh, uh, specimen, but you will not get the, the answer to important questions that you need for your patient. Stomach lesions are very rare in, um, in Europe, and not all the stomach lesions are the same. Ant antrum is easy, but uh, uh, the lesions uh, in the subcardial uh, region where you have to uh, work in retroflexion can be uh, more difficult. So stomach lesions are rare and sometimes uh, can be also difficult. Uh, what about the results? Uh, I don't want to comment all of these figures, but look here. The, the biggest series published on Earth, the biggest series published in Europe, and the biggest series published in Czech Republic. You see those differences in numbers. It's uncomparable, and uh, it is very difficult to say that this 8% is, is bad and this is good. Uh, this is simply uncomparable. Whatever will happen to ESD in Europe, I believe will happen in the colon because we have a lot of lesions in the colon. But before you start with uh, colonic ESD, you should keep in mind that EMR is effective for most lesions less than 20 millimeters, that there is virtually zero risk of submucosal invasion for LST granular homogeneous type, so no need to treat by ESD. Proponents of ESD uh, are speaking about local residual neoplasia, but if it happens, it can be treated in 91% during one additional session. Anyway, surgery in colon is le less invasive uh, than in upper GI tract, and functional results are quite good. And erectal cancers that are easier to, to resect uh, are biologically worse than colonic cancers. So this is something that we should keep in mind before proceeding to colon. And uh, this is one example. You can treat such a big lesion uh, in the rectum, let's say in four hours, but probably it's not necessary because the same lesion, the type of the lesion can be treated by piecemeal EMR in let's say one hour. So uh, why to use ESD in the colon in such a lesion? What about the results? Again, comparison 
big series from Japan, France and Czech Republic, you see that those differences in the numbers are not so big as in the, in the stomach, but look at the, at the perforation rate, 18%, 12%, it's too high. Fortunately, we have also better results in Europe, and I asked my uh, co-chairman, uh, the chairman, uh, for his results, which I saw last year. And you see that in, in Belgium, they were able to treat more than 200 uh, patients, and they were able to uh, perform unblocked resection in more than 157 cases, uh, which is, I think, uh, quite a good number. There is no, probably no indication for ESD in, for Barrett esophagus cancer, at least according to ESGE guidelines published last year. There are some prospects uh, that should uh, make ESD easier for, uh, also for European physicians. Uh, but uh, none of them uh, is uh, widely used. I would appreciate, for instance, to have the better jelly for submucosal injection uh, published in 2014, but uh, no more information uh, so far. Even in Japan, they are looking uh, for better ESD methods, uh, let's say, uh, which are simple and faster. And one of them is so-called simplified ESD. Uh, as you can see here, this is the patient treated by circumferential uh, incision, uh, followed by uh, partial submucosal dissection, and uh, uh, the procedure is finished by snaring, as you know from endoscopic polypectomy. And those are the results showing that simplified ESD has almost the same uh, outcome as uh, ESD, uh, apart from slightly higher rate of perforation and bleeding. Another uh, method that is uh, used now is so-called pocket creation method, and it comes uh, uh, the, after the experience with POEM, and you can find in endoscopy how to do this uh, uh, method in the, in the colon. Finally, Europeans uh, have developed uh, this uh, full sickness method, uh, resection method, and uh, so far it has been used only in some specific situations. Uh, uh, and in wall resect study, the results were quite amazing. So maybe in the future, uh, some lesions could be treated with uh, the help of this technique. So ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude that it is my opinion that ESD has changed paradigm of early GI tract cancer treatment also in Europe. Compared to country of its origin, is uh, performed in different clinical scenario. Should be started after relevant training. ESD is mostly needed for colorectal lesions in Europe and is still technically developing. Thank you for your current attention.